Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Tuesday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. We call our Tuesday broadcast with this title, Tract and Truth Tuesday. Tract and Truth Tuesday. The word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, and it's a reference to a gospel track. That's an evangelism tool. We're going to highlight one of our gospel tracks here in a moment. Obviously, the word truth refers to gospel truth found in the Word of God, and I think you know what Tuesday has reference to. Well, welcome to Tract and Truth Tuesday. If you can, get your Bible and join me, please. I'm going to be beginning by quoting out of the book of 2 Peter, the very last verse of 2 Peter, 2 Peter 3.18, but then I'm going to be reading in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, and if you can, get your Bible out and join me in 1 Thessalonians in chapter 3. Years ago, I preached a message to the church I was pastoring at the time. The title of the message was this, Are You Guilty of a Growing Faith? Are you guilty of a growing faith? And I use that word faith is kind of a catch-all word, and the point of my message was to challenge my folk to be growing as believers. Obviously, I wanted those that were young in Christ to desire to grow. I wanted those that were very mature in Christ to still seek to grow more. But obviously, I wanted those that were part of my church that were not growing and had become stagnant in their Christian life, I wanted them to alter course and begin to grow. So right now, I pose to you today that question. Are you guilty of a growing faith? Do you know what issues God wants you to be growing in? Can you give to a young believer a good working definition of what spiritual growth is? Well, let's see if we can begin to answer those questions here today. Get your Bible open to 1 Thessalonians in chapter 3. I said, as I gave the title for the broadcast today, Tract and Truth Tuesday, that the word track refers to a short written presentation of the plan of salvation found in the Word of God. It's called a gospel tract. We here at Bible Tract Echoes, this radio program is just simply the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracks, as my announcer said, and we have been publishing gospel tracts for over 80 years. We do that so that we can put into the hand of mature saints and very young in the Lord's saints, give them tools that they can give out, both to people with whom they'll never have the opportunity to verbally tell the gospel, but also to give to people as they are telling the gospel to them to leave them with an ongoing witness. I want to give you a free sample packet, which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts, but the one in my hand I want to highlight for you right now is entitled titled, When You Meet God. When You Meet God. Now, that's a serious statement, and on the front face of this gospel tract is a tombstone with a lady there knelt in front of it. She's in a praying position here. Obviously, she appears to be dealing with the fact that somebody she loves dearly has passed away and is buried there, and that person has met God. But friend, We need to prepare to meet God while we are still alive in our mortal bodies. And that's what this gospel track does. It begins with this statement. Listen to what God's word says about him, speaking about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, the prophet Moses quotes God's own word, saying, I am holy. The prophet David wrote, Thou art holy, speaking about God. This tract lays out the fact that God is holy, but man is not. We're sinners. It goes on to clearly explain how that God has made a way for sinners to have their sins dealt with. That's why Christ died on the cross. He shed his blood that people can have their sin debt paid, and then God forgive them of their sin. This is a great, clear 
gospel presentation, When You Meet God. At the end of the program, my announcer will give you some ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. Do that, and we'll send that sample packet to you. And again, it is free. You can just go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. All right, if your Bible is open, to 1 Thessalonians, I begin, I said, I'm going to quote to you out of the last verse of 2 Peter, which says this, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. The key part there, we are to be growing in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. In your Bible, open there to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, beginning at verse 10, here's what the Bible says. Night and day, praying exceedingly that ye might we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now, God Himself and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love toward one another and toward all men, even as we do towards you. To the end, He may establish your heart unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with his saints. There, the apostle Paul is talking to the believers at that time living in Thessalonica. He wanted their faith to grow and bring up and make up that which was lacking in their faith. But then when I turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3, here's what he says. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet that is proper, because that your faith it groweth exceedingly and the charity or a love of every one of you all towards each other aboundeth. Evidently, whatever Paul had done, it had aided in these people growing in faith and in love. Friend, let me give you a statement that uh, is, I think, quite obvious. I want to hopefully stimulate your minds today and your heart to grow in your own personal walk with the Lord. The stronger any of us are, obviously, the more effective we're going to be in communicating the gospel. And that's really my heartbeat. We're going to communicate the gospel more effectively by voice and as well as using tracks. Now, as we're going to see here, being a growing child of God will mean that I am, number one, obeying God's word to be growing, but number two, I'll be better able to share in the heart of God to see sinners receive the gospel. So let's begin this way. Just what is spiritual growth? How do we define it? Well, spiritual growth, like physical growth, is a progressive thing. It increases. We're increasing in the vital areas of our spiritual experience. The clearest way to define spiritual growth really is this. Spiritual growth is me, you, becoming more like Jesus. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, beginning at verse 11, that section tells us that God has given to people to serve in the position of leadership in some local churches in some particular ways to help other believers mature, to grow. In verse 14 of Ephesians 4, we read these words, that henceforth we be no more children. And verse 15 finishes the thought with these words, that we may grow up into him, capital H, in all things, which is the head, even Christ. There are other places in the Word of God that I could go to that tells us we are to grow up to be like Christ. Here, this one on Ephesians 4 will suffice for today. All right, that's what spiritual growth is. In a nutshell, is you and I growing more and more to be like Christ. But why ought we to want to be growing believers? Well, when something has life, it grows. That's a truth not only in the natural realm, but it's also in the spiritual realm. You may probably have heard me mention Florida. You see, for 20 years, I ministered in Florida in churches. Now, while I was there, I learned things about those animals called alligators. 
One thing about alligators that I learned is that alligators continue to grow their entire life. They get longer and bigger each year. So you can tell which alligator is older when you see a bunch of them there in a place that's hopefully penned off away from them. You can see which ones are older because they are bigger. Well, believers are to be consistently growing in the Lord. We ought to be able to detect the older, the more mature believers from the younger ones based obviously not on their physical size and height, but on their resemblance to Jesus. And my friend, here just a quick note here, our Christ-likeness tends to be displayed and tends to manifest itself more often in times of difficulty, trouble, affliction, persecution, turmoil, whatever word you want to put in there, that's when Christ-likeness tends to really show up and be identified. But which areas in us need to be growing? The verses I read earlier out of 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, uh, those verses talk about growing in grace and in knowledge of Jesus, growing in faith, and so on. What does all that mean about growing in grace and in knowledge? Well, obviously, growing in the knowledge of Jesus, that one's pretty simple. To do that, I'll need to be learning more about who Jesus is, how he lived, why he died, and what his heart is like for people. Now, these things I can find being in God's word for myself and having my mind, having a learner's spirit as I'm reading the word of God. I'll need to read the scriptures and ask myself that what am I learning about Jesus in this passage? Then I'll need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit who indwells me as a believer to help me remember what I just saw there in the word and then help me to begin to imitate what I saw. Now, what we imitate are Christ's qualities and his character. And the good synopsis of Jesus's qualities and characters is found over in Galatians 5, that passage that you and I refer to as the fruit of the Spirit. But quickly, let me add this about the fact that we are to be growing in this area called grace. Grace is simply the gift that God gives to his people, the gift of his power and his desire to do what he wants, to do his will. Growing in grace is when we see ourselves going more and more to him for his power and for his insight into his will for the issues we're facing at the moment. Growing in grace is when we are gaining in our desire to see not only what his will is, but to do his will. Well, here's my assignment for you today. If you've never memorized that verse I quoted, 2 Peter 3, 18, Go memorize that text. Again, the reference is 2 Peter 3.18. If you've already memorized that one, then put this next text in your memory bank. Philippians 2, 12 and 13. That's Philippians 2, 12 and 13. Memorize the text, but as you're doing it, then pray and say, Lord, which part, which facet of my Christian walk do you want me to strengthen first? Make a list of the areas in your life that you know are not as strong as they ought to be and say, Lord, which of these do you want me to focus on first? Let God speak to your soul. He will. And let's make that your aim. More next week. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 828 6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.